We're here in the Science of Rock and Roll exhibition. We're really happy to have this here because it really underlines the fact that science is everywhere. And here at the Science Center, we're going to prove it. A number of years ago, I did a radio program called The Ongoing History of New Music. And one of the topics I talked about was the evolution of recorded music, how we went from wax cylinders with Thomas Edison all the way up to MP3s. And there was a guy in town here named Brian Reinblatt who listened to that show, and he never really got it out of his head. Later, he was thinking about getting involved in a, a touring museum exhibit. And he remembered that show, and he thought, well, why don't we do a touring science and technology exhibit on the science of rock and roll? And why don't we call up this guy who did the show and ask him to contribute the content and information to it? So uh, they started building the, the exhibit, and then they brought me in to handle all the, uh, the content and, and info that you see here. It's, it's amazing how things happen. There were a lot of people involved in this exhibit. Um, we had, you know, creative directors, we had art directors, we had uh, people that dealt with the website, people dealt with the videos. Uh, oh God, I can't even tell you how many people were involved in it. Uh, but without them, uh, this would not have been a, a, a possible at all. You're going to go through the history of rock and roll, right from the early days, to listening to the music and understanding the technology, all the way through to today. And you get a chance to play the drums, to play the guitar, to record yourself, really feel part of the action. It's a fantastic change for the Science Center. We're really excited about having it here. We hope everybody will come. The exhibition has a number of halls, number of sections. We're standing in the radio section right now. Radio was a very important technology when it came to the spread of rock and roll beginning in the 1950s, especially with the transistor radio, which came out in 1954. Then we move into the decades hall, which details the uh, relationship between science and technology and music from the 1950s forward. Then we get into an area where you are allowed and encouraged to learn how to play instruments. You learn how a guitar works. You learn how uh, the drums work. You learn how keyboards and synthesizers work. Then we move into another section where you get to sing and you get to record that and share it on social media. Then there are areas where you get to remix a song. Other places where you get to uh, learn uh, things about composition and arrangement when it comes to a band. And then on your way out, you see how this all works in a live environment. It's, it's pretty cool and I think as we go on, as this exhibit continues over the years, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. These tables are reactive computers. You play with these blocks, these chips. Each one represents a different instrument or an effect. So you can play the guitar, the drums, by placing them here. But if you want to have delay or a, a kind of a, a, a filter put onto a guitar, you can change that. You can gear it up, gear it down. Literally, you're creating a musical uh, presentation on a computer, but you're playing with it in this open, uh, open style touch table computer approach. It's very technically advanced. It also gives you insight into the various elements that, that are put together to create that special sound that you get in rock and roll. So a great deal of work has been done over the many years with recorded sound, filtered sound, and uh, audio effects. Audio effects are built into the rock and roll presentations on stage. And here you have a chance to do it yourself. The rock and roll as it's developed from say the, the early 50s up until today has gone through a lot of technological change. This has been corresponding with changes in the development of technology in many other 
areas of, of, of work. So the development of computers and the way in which we can now filter sound and we can now decipher, we can, we can take apart sound and analyze it using mathematical uh, applications and using technology which allows us to, to, to uh, dissect it and put it together in another way. Now musicians themselves are using these forms of technology, this, this approach to technology to create the music itself. As well, this new understanding of neuro the neurological effects on the brain, uh, sounds which will trigger certain activities, sounds which make you want to dance, certain rhythms which make you want to, want to move. These studies are being done by brain scientists, as well they're being done at the same time by rock musicians. So you can say that there's always been a synergy between the popular music movement and the development of technology and computers, the development of understanding of our biology, the way we think, the way we work, the way we react to each other. Uh, there's also a sociological uh, uh, connection because different societies have come together, so the music of many parts of the world are now blending together. And there have been, of course, thousands of years of development of music in our society where that's been part of who we are, part of what we understand ourselves to be. That very much is a science. That science is now understood by everybody because we can share music together. And that shared music gives us a new understanding which helps us to understand the, the link again between how science works and how we ourselves in our society are part of, of that culture of the development of science just as we see our music developing, we've seen our science developing. And we at the Science Center are happy to have this exhibit because it brings together those two elements in a very acoustic, a, a, a immersive atmosphere. To be any kind of, of singer or musician, it requires a certain amount of talent and a certain amount of, of, of heart. Uh, but you can't do it properly unless you have something like a microphone. And you have to be able to know how a microphone works if you're going to sing properly, if you're going to be heard properly in performance and when you're recording something. If you're a guitar player, you need to know how a guitar works. And there's a lot of physics and mathematics that go into playing a guitar. Same thing with the drums, believe it or not. If you want to record your music, you have to understand how certain how the properties of sound, not only acoustically, but electrically. So there's all kinds of intersections of science, technology, and music that you may take for take it uh, for granted, but are actually very, very important to the final product. For a small charge, where uh, everybody has a chance to have this all-access backstage pass, the exhibition is hooked up to recording devices so that when you, for example, uh, stand uh, with your guitar, you're, you're trying it out or you're, you're sitting at the drum set and you're trying out the drums, you get a chance to record yourself or with your react tables, reactables, where, where you're putting together a musical piece using a, a, a tabletop computer with uh, guitars and filters and drums and filters and, and delays. You're, you're putting together your, your musical act. You get to record it. It records, it connects to your, uh, you know, you connect to your own personal email and you can then pick it up later after you go home and you'll have a record of your your visit to this exhibition. This, as far as we know, is the only science and technology exhibit, the only touring one anyway, that deals with that intersection between science, technology, rock, pop, and hip-hop music. Uh, we have lots of touring exhibits that deal with King Tut and Titanic and bugs and dinosaurs, but we don't have anything quite like this. The company is based out of Toronto. We've done three stops already, Kansas City, Detroit and Oklahoma City, but this here in Toronto is the big one. The Ontario Science Center is one of the most renowned science centers in the entire world. So we're hoping that this is going to be our big breakthrough for the planet and we hope to tour this for years to come across North America, across Europe, and we're already in talks with some people in the Far East um, to bring it to Asia Pacific. One of the really interesting things about this exhibit is that it can be enjoyed by all ages. Kids love it, adults love it because they can interact with their kids on a musical level and they're learning things, both of them are learning things at the same time. Uh, adults can come in here and enjoy it on their own level and if you're a hardcore music fan, you could also come in here and spend a lot of time browsing through the exhibits. I think we can satisfy everybody here. And if you